So, if you look at these two properties of the two algorithms, then you can see that for both of them time complexity is exponential in nature. If you look at space complexity which is the size of open, time complexity can be seen think thought of as a size of closed because those are the nodes that you have seen and space complexity is the set of candidates that you are keeping which is the size of open and you can see here that uh, that first search uh, uh, wins on space complexity, but breadth first search wins on the quality of the solution because we have already observed that it will give you the shortest path. In terms of completeness for finite search spaces both are complete in the sense both will end up exploring the entire space. Uh, but if you have infinite search space, we have seen that that first search can go into an infinite loop essentially. Whereas again, this is a plus point for breadth first search that it is guaranteed to terminate if there is a path to the goal node because the path will always be of a finite length, and that first search breadth first search goes down level by layer, exploring paths of greater length. So can we have an algorithm? that uses linear space for open and which guarantees the shortest path. Okay. So, luckily we have such an algorithm, but before we move to that algorithm let us look at the, uh, uh, a simpler algorithm and this is called depth bounded depth first search. And essentially what you are doing is depth first search, but you have a depth bound as shown here. So, in some sense you have to stay within this circle uh, which is like a Lakshman Rekha that the algorithm cannot go outside. And, but otherwise the algorithm is depth first search. So, essentially what you say do depth first with a depth bound of D where D is given to us. And as you can see this will be linear space because this is really depth first search. And as you can see this is not complete because as you can see the goal is outside this boundary. So, it will never find that goal uh, and also because it is depth first search it will not guarantee your shortest path because even if there were two goals within its boundary it might have found the one with the longer distance. Okay. So, of course, this is not something very exciting, but we can use this algorithm to construct a, a new algorithm which is as follows. Okay. So, this is just a code for uh, uh, depth bounded depth first search if you were writing the program and the key thing to note here is that you move forward only if you have within the depth bound otherwise you do not move forward essentially. Hmm. There is a variation on this algorithm which we call uh, dbdfs2 and what this does is that it maintains uh, a count of the uh, number of nodes. So, initially we say count is equal to 0 and that is the number of nodes it has seen and as we keep increasing we keep adding count to the new nodes that we have seen essentially. Okay. So, this gives us a clue for the algorithm that we are interested in which is depth first iterative deepening. Uh, it is essentially a series of depth bounded depth first searches done by increasing the depth bound gradually. So, the key thing is that we initially say depth bound is equal to 0 and then as we do a sequence of dbdfs calls we keep increasing the depth bound by 1 essentially. So, essentially we are doing iterative deepening in the sense that iteratively we do dfs which is longer and longer and longer and uh, uh, we continue doing this to till either of the two criteria is met. One is that if the previous count in the previous cycle is the same as in this cycle which means we are not visiting any new nodes and therefore, we can return with failure. And otherwise if you have found the path then we return the path essentially. Hmm. Now, you can see that that because this algorithm is doing a sequence of depth first searches or depth bounded depth first searches its space complexity will be linear. But since it is going iteratively deeper level by level, it will end up finding the shortest path essentially. Okay. So, let us look at a 
uh, small example and I want to just illustrate a point that one has to be careful about. Uh, this point was raised when I was teaching this course in IIT Dharwar and a student called Siddharth Sagar pointed this out to me that if you are maintaining the closed list then DFID will not find the shortest path. So, let us see what is happening here. So, this is a small search space here and as before we will say this is the start node and this is the goal node and we will quickly see how this behaves algorithm. So, what does DFID do? It does a sequence of searches essentially. So, this is the state space. Uh, in the first cycle where depth equal to 0, it only looks at the start node. In the second cycle where depth is equal to 1, it goes down one level or it looks at paths of length 1. Then in the third cycle when depth becomes 2, it does DFS and looks at paths of length 3. In the fourth cycle, it uh, looks at depth 3 and it looks at path of length 3. Now, if you are if you are pruning nodes which are already on closed. Uh, so, remember that this is doing depth first search. So, this will go into close, 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 this will go into close. And then when we have to generate children of B, we cannot generate D because D is already unclosed. So, if you observe this graph, you will see that the shortest path to the goal is this one, which is goes through B and D, but our search algorithm will not able will not be able to find this and this is because we are maintaining this closed list. Okay. So, let us look at this phenomenon again uh, and that how checking with this closed list can create a problem. Now, we are looking at the graph uh, and the same problem, the same search that is happening. When it explores paths of length 0, it has seen only the start node. When it explores path of length 1, it has generated uh, A and B. The dotted edges are the ones it has not generated on the way. When it looks at paths of length 2, uh, it has uh, looked at the nodes uh, S, A, C and S, B, D. At this point, it has found the shortest path to D, but when it looks at paths of length 3, it finds the path to D which is a longer path and more importantly, it does not allow D to be generated as a child of B because it is already been inspected and consequently, it does not find the shortest path and eventually when we do the next cycle paths of length 4, it finds a longer path to the goal node. And so, therefore, maintaining close is a no no if you are doing DFID. So, this is just an algorithm where uh, we maintain uh, D, we run DFID uh, without maintaining the close node. For those of you who are interested in programming, you can go back to this slide and have a look essentially. Uh, but essentially, if you look at the depth first uh, iterative deepening algorithm, what it does? is that it initially sends uh, sets a depth bound and then uh, it keeps increasing the depth bound to 1 essentially. There is a series of depth first depth bounded depth first searches with increasing depth essentially till it finds a goal node or till it uh, exhausts looking at the entire graph if it is a finite graph. If it is an infinite graph, it may never terminate. So, it is a series of depth bounded first searches requiring linear space because it is depth first search uh, with increasing depth bound. Uh, when the path to the goal is found, some iteration in found in some iteration, it is the shortest path because otherwise it would have found it in the previous path essentially. So, DFID and mind you DFID when you are not maintaining the closed list will give you the shortest path and it requires linear space for the open list. But is there a catch? I mean, are we getting something for free? We are getting the advantages of breadth first search and depth first search. Let us just quickly look at this. Obviously, it does extra work to do. For every new layer that DFID explores, which is this last layer in this figure, it searches the entire tree up to that layer all over again. So, all this tree it searches again. 
So, it is in some sense it is doing breadth first search, but it is doing those additional internal nodes as well as. So, if there are i internal nodes and l leaves, then uh, DFID inspects l plus i nodes, whereas breadth first would have inspected only l nodes. So, how much is this extra work? Now, that is a interesting observation about exponential growth is that the number of leaves generally significantly outnumber the number of internal nodes, which means the set of candidates, the number of candidates generated at every level is always larger than the all the candidates that you have seen in the path essentially. Okay. So, the number seen by DFID would be a ratio of L plus i divided by L, where L plus i is what DFID sees and L is what breadth first search sees. Uh, but you know that for a full tree with branching vector b, the number of leaves is given by this expression b minus 1 into number of internal nodes plus 1. And therefore, if we do this uh, ratio and we ignore small constants, we say that the ratio is only b over b minus 1 and again which is not very significant, uh, which means that for example, if b were to be 9 as before, then this would be 9 by 8. So, it is not significantly extra works that DFID is doing, but it is giving us the shortest path with linear space. Okay, so, the cost is not significant, but the, but the thing you must keep in mind is that it is still exponential in nature. All these three algorithms depth first search, breadth first search and these things are exponential in nature and the monster that we are fighting in AI or combating in AI is uh, the combinatorial explosion or exponentially growing third space, which is depicted on this tree, which as you can see growing on your right hand side of the screen. For every node that fails the goal test, all its successors are added to the search tree. So, this is a little bit like if you are familiar with Greek uh, mythology, the monster Hydra that uh, Hercules was fighting, that for every head of the monster that Hercules would chop off, a whole host of heads would appear and an and a exponentially growing search tree essentially signifies that. Uh, and as you can see that even when branching factor is 3, then the search tree is growing large enough that we cannot draw the next level on this board essentially. So, essentially we need some other approaches to fight this combinatorial explosion and we will do that in the next class. Uh, we will leave with the observation that the depth first search algorithm always behaves in the same manner irrespective of whether the goal was here or whether it was here or whether it was here. And in that sense, it is a blind search algorithm. The same is the case with breadth first search irrespective of whether the goal is here or here or here. It just merrily goes around doing what it does all the time without even being aware of where the goal node is. So, the next stage that we will look at is called heuristic search. Uh, and that is what we will do in the next class. Okay, so, see you for the next class.